All right, YouTube, His Majesty Grant Strobel has uh, successfully trolled all of the social justice warriors at the uh, higher echelons of their existence. Uh, he, he takes up, it appears, the same line of reasoning that I do uh, in this, and I'll explain the story and why it's <laughs> rather funny, actually. Um, I don't care if somebody has preferred pronouns that deviate from what you would consider the traditional like Judeo-Christian dichotomy of male and female. I really don't. I don't care if people are transgender, I don't care if they're gay, gender fluid, I don't, those labels mean nothing. I don't care if they literally identify as an attack helicopter in an unironic sense. I don't have any moral position against them because I don't believe in that sort of situational morality that was concocted uh, in many cases by people who didn't exactly have all of their marbles in their heads. But I don't think, and I would agree with like the most far right elements of the world on this, I do not believe that any educational edifice should dole out punishment to people for not believing in the same thing. I don't believe it's acceptable. Uh, I believe it's a stifling of creativity. I think that if a person is paying money to attend especially a public edifice, not, not necessarily a private school, but something like the University of Michigan, a public edifice partially funded by taxpayers in grant form and so forth, and loans and everything else, I think that those edifices should be held to a different standard. They should not be able to punish people for anything that's not a criminal act. They should not be in the habit of policing any form of thought or speech or expression. Uh, on the left or the right, when somebody wants to like strip down nude and call it art, well, go ahead and do so. The university shouldn't give a damn. Call it art and, and make it exempt. Likewise, though, if a person doesn't believe in pronoun stuff, if they think that it's all special snowflake nonsense, if they don't care about trigger warnings and so forth, they shouldn't be punished for that. They should have the right to express themselves. Uh, these are academic places. These are places where people pay a lot of money to go and learn about science or about mathematics or something like that. It's not where they go to spend a lot of money to be told what to think. And that's really the line of reasoning that needs to increasingly be used uh, in our public education system at all levels. I, I think this applies as well to directly state-funded uh, primary education. I, I never believed in dress codes. I never believed that students in, for instance, a high school that are in young adulthood should be told, oh, well, this the word crap is unacceptable or something. I remember that. I always thought it was nonsense. It's, it just does it, especially in the internet age, in the social media age, it makes even less sense than it always did before. Uh, you know, when I was in like you know, fifth grade or something, I was looking up the encyclopedia of shit when I was at the library and I thought it was hilarious. I was always laughing about that stuff because it was fun. Uh, that's sort of the point of these things. Um, but Grant Strobel, his majesty, of course, has decided that that's his preferred pronoun. Now, because the University of Michigan and indeed all of the sort of social justice side of culture has not actually doesn't have the capability to actually limit what pronouns are used that's perfectly acceptable it'll be populated across all their rosters and everything and now all of the professors have to refer to him as his majesty otherwise they get in trouble for not doing so uh, and really uh, what it does is it it mocks the use of special snowflake pronoun stuff there are people who feel honestly on a deep psychological level they feel like for instance they're biologically female but they feel like a male they prefer to use a, a male pronoun there are people who are biologically male who feel as though psychologically they are female they may prefer a female pronoun there are people who don't really feel like they have a gender I can understand that but for every person that's like that there's another person who's just doing it for attention let's not kid ourselves they do exist the most of the people who act triggered and constantly irate and offended at everything, they don't have any deep-seated views about these things. They do it for attention. They do it to try to lord over others to force them to apologize to get their way. They're spoiled brats. That's all that they are. Um, this is a good way of pointing that out and making it clear that that the whole situation really especially when it regards people potentially being punished in some way uh, officially or unofficially or chastised in some way for not choosing to delve into the pronoun game or any other special snowflake game that that itself is retarded it really is stupid um, it's it's a sad state of affairs 
when people who supposedly they're like the best and brightest of the upcoming generation they're in college they're learning they want to go off and be the biologist or the rocket scientist or the engineer or something uh they're, that they're so easily offended so isolated from all human contact and all common sense that the university has to tell them what to think and provide them with spaces where their views can't be challenged their opinions can't be challenged and nobody can in fact challenge them anywhere else because to do so will simply make them irate because they they identify as a an other kin trans helicopter uh gender non laptop conforming binary orange or something like that uh, and really you have people who flood out from Tumblr and places like that, who are like that. Now, I know people. I've known people that were homosexual, bisexual, transgendered. I've known people who don't like the pronouns of, of what most people would ascribe to their biological gender. I don't care. I don't have a problem with that. If anyone thinks that it shocks me, please. Uh, I, I watched Meat Spin enough, so I, I just don't care about these things. Uh, you know, Blue Waffle and Meat Spin and Lemon Party. Trust me, there are 10,000 times more things in the world that are likely to shock me a little bit or bowl girl bowl girl was the worst than something like you know oh well you're using my wrong pronoun uh, i'd prefer z or z or something okay whatever i don't care i just won't use a pronoun at all most of the time if somebody is going to say that i'll just avoid the issue altogether that when nobody can get mad at me it doesn't matter to me one way or the other but when you have an edifice that people are paying money to go to uh, and government would be the same. It's paid for by people's productivity, by the fact that it confiscates about a third of everybody's income. Uh, they have no right whatsoever to impose any form of moral onus upon people uh, who are taking part in such a venture, especially if they're paying out of pocket, uh, to force them. Like It's like New York City there, where businesses can now be fined for not using preferred pronouns. It's stupid. It's completely stupid. Because what if I walk into a business and I say, oh, well, my pronoun is his majesty. And somebody says, well, fuck you, uh, you know, just get the fuck out of my shop. Oh, well, I guess you're out $100,000 and I'm in $100,000. It's going to become increasingly a big problem because of the legalese involved. Uh, that's because government's gotten involved. And it really, it's really a sham is what it is. It's a way to graft money and make people miserable and set people apart from one another and, and cause them to fight. And all of the special snowflake people uh, in the country, the people who wear glasses without frames and dye their hair and have a shirt that says like unicorn fat acceptance or something. And, you know, most of them have have some genetic difficulties, I guess, going on uh, and swill down Mountain Dew or, or Diet Coke or something all day. Uh, these people are at the forefront of trying to use these things to stifle others dissent of their opinions. What they don't realize is that in so doing, they are acting exactly like last yesteryear's evangelicals. The evangelicals of like the 2000s, the Bush era, uh, simply they used the same exact tactics. They did the same exact things. Well, my views are objective. Your views suck. If you disagree with me, you suck, not just your views. You're wrong. You're evil. In, in the yesteryear, you'd say, well, you're going to hell. You don't believe in Jesus. You don't believe in like the war on terror or something. Now they would say, oh, well, you're, you're an evil Nazi bigot, you know, fascist, e-kiling all day or something like that. It's just a pile of bullcrap is what it is, honestly. It's, that's not reality. What they claim to be objective is anything but. Uh, it's, it's messy. It's stupid. It's really uh, going to denigrate, denigrate our educational attainment. We've already got problems in this country with the fact that over time, over the last few decades, we've lost a great deal of educational attainment. Do you think that telling people, well, no, no little honey, little zeer, whatever, you, you don't have to uh, face the fact that people in this world might not always automatically ex uh, accept or respect everything about you. Here's your ball pit safe space. Well, that's not going to help them learn, you know, bioengineering or, or chemistry or something like that. It's just a complete distraction somebody who breaks down and cries every other day because they they saw somebody wearing fur and oh think of the animals or uh, they break down and cry because they got misgendered or something these are very emotionally fragile individuals the best thing for them in many cases would be therapy honestly uh, and i don't say that because i believe this is a mental illness i say this is the result of their upbringing they've been brought up 
being constantly admonished in some cases, the younger generation that is, uh, by government telling them, oh, well, you know, everyone who disagrees with us is objectively wrong and a bigot. So they've simply taken that and extrapolated the same faulty reasoning, really, the same uh, fake objectivism. And they've extrapolated that to their own beliefs, their own opinions. I see people on the right doing this, too. There are people, you know, on the, on the far right, they're like, they, they actually do have what you would generally consider bigoted views, and they consider them objective, because that's the sort of weird world we've been brought up in. We haven't been brought up in a world where we value reason and logic and thinking of things in a subjective manner to reason our way through them in, a, in hopefully a more or less unbiased approach. What we've been raised up in is a world where everybody is essentially taught, your views are perfect, you're perfect, everything about you is just fine, and if something deviates from that, well, they're going to hell. If the person's like a, an evangelical, they, well, yeah, there's non-believers over there, they go to hell when they die, they suffer forever. Um, if they're if they're like you know racial nationalists saying yes those people are are wrong their their country will be destroyed because they're not like you, in the case of the far left it would be yeah yeah all these other people they're bigots they're Nazis they're fascists uh, you don't have to listen to them no matter what they're talking about they could be talking about ice cream flavors but they're still a fascist so everything they say is wrong, uh, it's actually very strange, so good on His Majesty Grant Strobel for sort of uh, deconstructing this little uh, fairy tale sort of ethos at the University of Michigan, because that's really what it is. Uh, I don't care what pronouns a person claims that they want used. Okay, whatever. <laughs> You're not going to find me concerned about it, but I don't think that the University of Michigan or any other college should dole out any form of punishment for misgendering, as, as though the term really meant anything. It's just newspeak, honestly, uh, number one. And uh, number two, uh, government definitely shouldn't be involved. And number three, I'm not sure that these people quite understand that the average person isn't really concerned about misgendering or, or any other newspeak crap that they happen to be spouting. If you're expecting those that are close to you to use your preferred pronoun or whatever, okay, well, it's fine, but don't expect some random stranger on the street to ignore your biological appearance and automatically know that you identify as Zier Trans Helicopter or something like that, because probably not going to happen. And getting irate at that person for it uh, for assuming my gender, misgender, come on, use, use your brain for once. I mean, half of these people going to college appear not even able to think critically, even on the most rudimentary level. The problem for some time has been that too little critical thinking has happened on a college campus. Now it seems that there's an actual war against critical uh, thinking. It seems like some of these campuses dislike it so much that they don't even want it to be scanned. They want it to be non-existent and actually punish people for thinking critically. It's actually very, very strange uh, what's going on. I don't even know if you can really call it education in some of these places anymore. Uh, certainly, there are many colleges that are just fine, but then there are some, like the University of Michigan, even UVM, when they're flying the BLM flag, when the student government says, oh yeah, we're just going to unilaterally decide to stand in solidarity with uh, basically a bunch of anarchists, who at this point are, are really more about demanding monetary compensation and, and raising slush funds than they are about racial justice, and they don't even ask the student population whether it's a good idea or not, then I say, yeah, that's a university that's failing at its mission statement. If it wants to be an educational institution, especially one that's paid for, again, in part by taxpayer money, what business do they have inserting their noses into such an argument? They don't have any business doing so. Um, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's potentially legally wrong, as well as uh, perhaps ethically dubious. That's about all. Peace out.